Hi everybody, and welcome back to What's It About? This is that Wednesday series where you look at different things from our faith, our religion, our, our cultural practices, and we learn how they all point us to God. Also, we kind of learn a little bit where they come from along the way. Today, I want to talk to you about clergy collars. Um, I've heard it a lot, and I know that other clergy have heard it as well. Why do you wear that? What is that thing around your neck? What are you doing? Well, clergy collars um, are actually a fairly recent addition uh, to our Christian tradition. You see, up until uh, probably about the 18th century, so late 1700s, maybe early 1800s, um, clerical dress constituted something that looked way more Roman citizen or Roman, uh, not a citizen, a Roman elite than it did what we would call church garb today. So the purpose of a clergy collar, of course, is to distinguish members of the ordained clergy from laypersons in the church. Now, this wasn't a status thing when it was created. This wasn't a look at me, I'm ordained, I'm a big deal. No, no, it was rather look at what I have in this community. So when you're out and about, if you're in a spiritual crisis or if, you, if you're hurt, you need care, this easily identifies us as members of clergy. Now, the common misconception is that clergy collars are innumerably Catholic, Roman Catholic. Uh, but what's funny about that is that this is neither Roman Catholic nor ancient Catholic. This is no Catholic. Uh, it started out actually by Presbyterians. A minister in the Church of Scotland, which of course is Presbyterian, uh, wanted to recreate uh, a detachable collar that was a little bit more comfortable and easy to wear. Detachable collar, what's that? Let's back up just a little bit in kind of fashion history. The idea that our collars are attached to our shirts, that's a new idea. Uh, until probably the, this time period or so, collars all buttoned on the front and back or sides to your shirt and were removed. That way you can easier clean the collar that gets dirty when the shirt might not, or if the shirt was dirty and soiled and needed to be washed, but the collar didn't, it was easy to separate them and take care of that. There are all sorts of things like that. Sleeves also at one point were detachable. So we're very spoiled with our modern clothing. So this minister in the Church of Scotland was trying to recreate the common garb of clergy at the time, which was, imagine I'm wearing a white button shirt, a regular, you know, tipped white button shirt. I pop the collar so that the collar points up like this, and then I put on my over things, um, a robe, a coat, um, a scarf, right? So there are all kinds of things um, that you could add on top, but the base layer was that collar that stuck straight up. Notice how my head hits it, right? It was common practice to fold the collar down over the detached collar of the shirt. We still see that in our modern dress shirts, right? The, the tab collars that instead of popping, they point, they're folded down. That, that's sort of this recreation. Those were originally detachable. So the original clergy shirt that was invented by this, this minister in the Church of Scotland, supposedly, uh, was a black shirt with a white detachable collar that was already folded over. So when you put it on, it was already folded over. So that's kind of the history. Um, they took hold really strong in, in, in the United Kingdom, the Anglican Church, uh, Scotland, uh, Church of England, Church of Wales, and they became a regular part of clerical garb in the Oxford movement, which was um, the eight, late 1800s into the early 1900s. So that's kind of the history of collars and where they come from. Now let's talk about the types of collars that you've probably seen. Um, the first that I want to point out is the full collar, um, often called the dog collar. Um, this was that pretty similar to that first sort of prototype of clergy collar that was made in the Church of Scotland. Um, I don't have a, a picture of me wearing it in worship per se, uh, but here, here is one of my headshots that has this detachable collar. You can see that it goes all the way around the neck, it clasps at the back, and fastens to the shirt in the front and back as well. It's just a piece of cotton that's been folded over to create that collar look, and it goes all the way around. Now, the other, time, the other kind you might have seen is this, what I'm wearing right now, which is called a tab collar, where this is just a piece of plastic or fabric, whatever it is, and it pulls out and creates this tab look. 
That's kind of a strange look. How did we get from a full white collar to this little piece of white just in the front? Well, let's remember back to our episode on vestments. Remember I said the base layer, the liturgical underwear, if you will, is a cassock, which is that long black robe that comes up and has a collar on it. Now here's a picture uh, of a cassock, and you'll notice that with the full collar underneath the cassock, all that sticks out is just that little section in the front where the collar is not closed. That could be a different length, right? Uh, Roman Catholics and, and Orthodox tend to like smaller tabs. Um, Anglican clergy tend to use a larger tab. I have kind of all the same. So this shirt, this, this tab shirt, is a recreation of a full collar underneath a cassock. So it was designed to make it easier to go out and about in the world without your full, you know, big cassock, heavy, hot, hot cassock, but be able to navigate and people say, oh, I can see your collar, you're ordained. So I hope that helps with just a little uh, history and, and kind of use about the clerical collar. Um, they have made a comeback in the United States, especially in Protestant clergy, Methodism, um, in the last 50 so, 60 years. Um, there have been many debates about that. Um, but remember that while I'm so glad that our Catholic siblings do wear it, um, remember this is actually a Protestant thing. This is actually from the Church of Scotland through the Church of England into us in modern Christianity. So I hope you have a great week. Uh, stay cool, and I look forward to seeing you all on Sunday. Um, bonus points if you catch me after worship and point out which kind of collar I'm wearing. Have a good week.